Well, hello good people. Uh, time for me to do a review on the Spacer Outlaw 429. Had it for about 18 months now and um, it replaces a Spacer Proline Angler 399. It was a good boat but I was uh, looking for a few more creature comforts now. The um, When I was looking to uh, buy this boat I went on to YouTube and looked around at what videos were available. There was very few, and there's still very few up there. So it's one of the reasons why I thought I'd uh, put this one up. There was plenty on the Quintrex uh, Renegade, which is a very similar boat, because the, the Stacer and Quintrex come out of the same stable it's up there on the Gold Coast. But uh, I found, for me, this was better value uh, for money. As I mentioned, I was looking for some creature comforts now that I'm getting a bit long in the tooth and some of the things that attracted me to this one was the side console much much more comfortable sitting there driving along than sitting up the back of the boat with a tiller steer uh, also the hydraulic lift for the motor makes a big difference on the, the proline angler I had to manually tilt that up and then if I was beaching I had to then get up to the front of the boat and uh, sit over the sides waiting for it to, to come in. Then the other thing is, if I was on a sandbank and I had to get back into the boat, I had to crawl over the side, whereas this one's got a little step at the back. So at my age, it's not, not easy to throw the leg over anymore. Anyway, let's have a look at the rest of the boat. Right, we'll start off with the trailer. Selected to go with the aluminium I beam. It costs an extra thousand dollars, but it's a much better trailer. As you can see here, it's a braked trailer. And then I added to this the walkway, and I use that um, at the boat ramp when I'm uh, coming in next to the pontoon. We can walk down that and hitch the, the boat up and then walk back to the, the winch. I've, uh, I've just left the uh, normal manual winch on there. Other than that, very, very good trailer. Really nice hull. Cuts through the water very smoothly. Can get a bit of a chop on the river and the lakes up here. But this is a really smooth ride especially compared to the uh, Proline Angler. So I'm quite happy with this. Much higher sides, which is a plus and a minus, but I'm, uh, I'm extremely happy with it. This is the rear of the boat. You can see the step there that I mentioned earlier. A couple of handles either side to help, uh, help pull up. Start here at the rear of the boat. This is the uh, live bait well. I don't use it really for uh, a live bait well. In fact, I tend just to keep the lunch box and drinks and things in there. One of the disappointing things was when I, uh, when I was evaluating the boat, across here there was a storage container that would hold a couple of tackle boxes and that disappeared. In fact, I never found out about that until after I'd ordered the boat. I learned to live without it, but I was very disappointed not, not to have it. The other change that was made after I'd ordered the boat, or at least I found out after I ordered the boat, it wasn't on the demonstration model, is this um, motor well at the back here. It used to be half the size. Across here was an extension of the casting deck, so you could walk all the way from that side across there to there. But they've chosen to get rid of that. I've learned to live with it now but uh, I was disappointed because compared to the other boat I was looking for a full rear casting deck. Anyway as I said I'm learning to live with it. This hatch here this is where the uh, fuel tank would, would normally go but I just use it for buckets. I've got a waterproof container there which carries wet weather gear 
and a few other bits and pieces down there, the torch and so on. Uh, just behind the well there for the motor is the crank, ah, it up, is where the crank battery is. So it, uh, it sits there. When the, when the casting deck was going right across, the crank battery was actually stored under that. Next we'll look at the side console. Good comfortable seats in this, I'm really pleased with those. It comes with two. I fish mainly on my own, so I only have one in the boat. Gives me more, more deck room. The console here has storage. I normally keep uh, my phone, a uh, couple of tools in there, spare batteries for uh, the Minn Kota phone and the likes. So that's in there. I have a Garmin uh, fish finder. I had it on the other boat and I was quite happy. It does what I needed to do. Uh, bigger would be better, but I, I really don't need it. And then I got a little phone uh, holder there. Uh, I use that when I connect uh, via the Mercury app uh, to the motor and I get all the stats from the motor on the phone then. It's quite good. The most important thing there is uh, keeps a running tally of the hours for maintenance purposes. Down in the side console uh, there I keep the fire extinguisher. I've got a waterproof container there that I keep things like the car keys and so on in there. And up there I just keep uh, fishing gloves and hand towels and the like. And then there's a uh, switch there which I added to the boat. I've installed under the console there a bus bar and a few things that I've added just connect to the bus bar and that uh, switch down there controls power to the, to the bus bar. The only instrument I have on there is the fuel gauge and that, uh, that also shows up on the Mercury app and then of course I've got the switches there for the the bilge pump for the live kill tank and uh, also the lights. Right there's all the open floor space that I uh, mentioned earlier with the second seat removed. If we then move forward you can see that there is plenty of storage up the front here. Under the floor is a 50 litre fuel tank which gives me a, a bit more room and a much longer range. Because I use the electric mostly, a tank of fuel lasts me forever. Right, let's just have a look here now. I had a, uh, call it what you like, a live well, kill well in here. I use it all the time. So uh, that was an extra though, you have to pay, pay for that. Then uh, if we look under here, there is a deep cycle battery. The only thing that runs on that is the Minn Kota. I can go fishing for six, seven hours. Once I get on site, I only use the Minn Kota. So it's never, never run out of battery in the six or seven hours that I've been out there. I use it both as an anchor and for trolling. Very, very good. Another container here. This one here is where I keep all my lures. Container down there for the GoPro bits and pieces because I run um, either two or three GoPros when I'm uh, when I'm out on the water. So that's in there. This other storage container here that has all the life jackets and some uh, beach towels in there. And there's also a waterproof container with bits and pieces in it. Uh, and of course the regulation uh, anchor well. I think in the 18 months I've used the anchor twice. Each time when I've gone up onto a, um, onto a sandbank. But other than that I use the Minn Kota for spot locking. And it also holds the the rope for when I tie up at the pontoon. 
on the front side of the uh, console I have a little uh, bin there that carries um, the lip grips and uh, pliers and the scent for, uh, for the lures. I also keep the uh, net here and down under that is where the tackle box stays so uh, nothing cluttering the deck up at all. On the port side of the boat there's the storage for the, the light and also I keep my fenders there for when I'm coming into the pontoon. The best investment I ever made was adding the Minn Kota to Rover on it. Um, it's a 55 pound thrust, excellent. I've used it for trolling, staying on a bearing on its own, um, use it for spot locking, no, an excellent investment. I fitted that myself. There's one issue that I have with the hull and that is uh, oxidisation and it's mentioned in the warranty and it's not covered by the warranty and it causes the paint to blister. blister. There it is there and I have uh, more up here and some over the other side of the boat. Very, very disappointed in that but I've just got to learn to live with it. All they mention in the... There's some more there. The only thing they mention in the warranty book is how to fix it and that's basically stripping it back and repainting it. Well, that's a look over the Stacer Outlaw 429. Generally speaking, very, very happy with it. Good, good move. Uh, I have absolutely no trouble at all launching and retrieving this on my own. So uh, if anybody's considering one of these boats, do recommend them and hope you enjoy the, the video.